peanut butter and jelly, donkeys and bananas, Zach and Josh, the elderly and picnics. These are some of life's greatest pairings. But there's one combination so pure, so magical, so perfectly perfect that I don't know how to end this sentence. Bear and bird. In a world where every other game is a sequel or a reboot, there's no series I want to return more than Banjo-Kazooie. The first game is one of my all-time favorites, and the sequel is great too, even if it goes a little hard on the collectibles. Then, for some reason, Rare decided to stuff these beloved wooden creatures into a car and drive the series off a cliff. But hiding in the fiery depths of the GBA library, there's a famously forgotten Banjo game, which maintains the collectathon hijinks that mothers crave. No, not you. I'm talking about Banjo-Kazooie, Grunty's Revenge. After realizing Microsoft Philip only lives to make me suffer, I decided to pick up a copy of Grunty's Revenge from my very real local video game store to see how it holds up. And what if I told you it's every bit as good as the first two games? It's not. But what if I told you that? Usually, when a story involves talking animals like this, I can't help but hold it up to the high standard already set by cult classic film, Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2, liked by an impressive 90% of Google users. So, as you can imagine, I was a little disappointed to find that the story of Grunty's Revenge isn't even as good as the more polarizing Beverly Hills Chihuahua 3, Viva La Fiesta, which is only liked by an embarrassing 90% of Google users. This dumb story takes place sometime between Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. Very important character Klungo formulates a plan to free the evil witch Gruntilda from her recent rock death by building a robot body that she can possess with her ghost body. Immediately after escaping, Gruntilda kidnaps Kazooie and travels back in time to prevent Banjo and Kazooie from ever partnering up. And in an attempt to save Kazooie, Mumbo then sends Banjo back in time as well, even though he could have just sent him back 10 seconds earlier to stop her from being kidnapped in the first place. Actually, not a single thing in this opening scene makes any sense. If Gruntilda can turn into a ghost, she could've just flown away at any point to possess somebody. Like Banjo, for instance. Make him eat Kazooie or walk into a volcano or something. Also, why does everyone suddenly know how to time travel? That seems like it would've been useful in the first game. And why out of the millions of possible ways to use time travel, would Gruntilda bring Kazooie to the past? First of all, Kazooie would already be in the past, so what happened to the other one? Second, it would make way more sense to kidnap Kazooie from the past and bring her to the future. Or, you know... Then there'd be nobody for Banjo to meet at all. Third, if Gruntilda's stupid plan worked at all, Banjo and Mumbo would have immediately forgotten Kazooie existed and gone on with their day like normal. It just gets worse the more I think about it, so let's move on. Grunty's Revenge plays in a style very similar to the N64 classics, with an expansive hub to explore along with five main worlds. The worlds are all themes we've seen before, but with little twists here and there to mix things up. The typical grassy world, for instance, is a farm now. When roaming around, expect all the usual bear activities, like collecting puzzle pieces, saving screeching gremlins, and destroying anyone that doesn't reward you in some way. The biggest difference being that it's on GBA, so everything has a fresh coat of ugly now. Fans of the series will immediately notice Banjo's moveset has been stripped down to the bare necessities, like running and jumping. Time travel causes selective amnesia, I guess, so even basic abilities like swimming and climbing have to be learned later. I'm not really sure why a bear needs climbing lessons from something that lives underground, but okay. On that note, music notes scattered around the world can be traded for new abilities from Bazai the Mole, an ancestor of Bottles the Mole, who may or may not be related to this mole. However, unlike Bottles, Bazai sounds like if Broken Glass ate Broken Glass and then tried to talk. I was kind of bummed out to find that Grunty's Revenge doesn't bring any new abilities to the table. Instead, most of the game is spent getting on par with your starting moveset in Banjo-Kazooie. There are a few from Banjo-Tooie as well, like the ability to use Kazooie as a gross egg gun. <coughs> Speaking of Kazooie, remember how the main goal of this whole game is saving her? That takes a ton of searching, puzzle solving, and traversing dangerous obstacles in order to- oh, wait, here she is. On World 2? After all that trouble of kidnapping her while she stood there doing nothing and bending the laws of reality, Gruntilda couldn't even bother hiding Kazooie on, like, World 5? Well, despite how much of a complaining Carlos I've been so far, I actually think Grunty's Revenge does a less than horrible job of squeezing a 3D platformer into two dimensions. At least better than a certain purple dragon ever did. Most of the worlds can be fun to complete, the music sounds about right, and finding Jiggies offers a good amount of variety. Sometimes you'll find them waiting in hard to reach places, while others can be earned by helping out memorable characters, like this chicken, or a mouse, or that same chicken but on a cliff now. 
Some jiggies can only be obtained by playing a handful of fun minigames. I mean, I don't think they're that fun, but somebody has to since they decided to reskin them multiple times across every world. I will admit, I do always think it's cool when 2D games try to fake 3D effects. One thing I was glad to see return is Mumbo Transformations, which give you access to abilities that a barren bird could never dream of doing alone, like Arson. They also work a little differently in this game. Instead of having one transformation per world, each Mumbo Hut now unlocks that creature for use in every world. It's a little underutilized, but I'd love to see this feature return if Banjo 3 ever happens. And yes, I did notice that Mumbo exists in both the past and present, while no other character does. I can only dissect the story of a game made for children for so long before it becomes weird. Difficulty-wise, Grunty's Revenge is generally on the easier side of things. Most of my frustration comes from the pseudo 3D effect, making it impossible to gauge where a platform was compared to me. I can totally make this jump, right? Nope. You have to go above it and drop down like some sort of confusing MC Escher painting. Other than that, 100%ing 4 out of the 5 worlds didn't give me much trouble. But that 5th world is a confusing dumpster fire. It's like trying to navigate Home Depot after your mom abandons you there while she goes on vacation. With slightly more lava. Fortunately, by the time I got to that point, I already had enough jiggies to basically skip over it entirely and move straight on to the last boss. So, I haven't mentioned any bosses up until this point, and there's a good reason for that. They're all bad. You only ever get to fight Klungo or Gruntilda, and the game plan for both involves running around in circles until their force field shuts off, allowing you to get one attack in. Repeat that a few times and then they're dead. And let me remind you that this guy created a time travel device, but can't make a shield that stays on for more than 10 seconds. If you loved fighting Gruntilda and Klungo five times throughout the game, I have good news for you. The final boss adds three more into the mix. Only now it's much more frustrating because the final phase dishes out crazy amounts of damage, and dying means you have three phases and two quiz shows to sit through again. Why are there always quiz shows? If you manage to suffer your way through this travesty of a boss fight, you're rewarded with a short ending scene which changes depending on how well you did, and a congratulations screen that you can take a picture of and attach to your resume, assuring that any company will hire you on the spot. In summary, if you're like me and would chew off your own flippers for a new banjo game, Grunty's Revenge might help fill the void. Just be ready to deal with a tub of jank during your adventure. That's why I'm giving Grunty's Revenge a C-. It's a ways off from what the N64 games have to offer, but at least there aren't any cars involved. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next video.